So, early one cool fall morning, I was out and about, farting around on the farm in the Appalachian Hills, looking at the grass and the trees and all the different types of foliage that are mid-size in between that, and I was really just wondering at all the amazing things that nature can, can do. And I, and I sat there and thought to myself, because I think about art things a lot, I thought to myself, why would I go to the store and just buy a bottle of ink when there is a walnut tree over there, which I've heard all weekend, I've heard all weekend walnuts falling from it with great thunderous thuds. Why would I go buy ink pre-bottled, professionally made from the store when I could go get those walnut husks and struggle and toil and put a lot of effort and elbow grease into the process of squeezing just a little bit of handmade ink out of nature. Because I've heard you can make ink out of walnut husks, the fruit that grows around the nuts. So I got a plastic bag and I gathered up some of these walnuts that had already fallen on the ground. They were a little bit gross because some of them had already started to rot a little bit, but I just tossed them right in there and then I took them home. Now, you might be saying, that's not what I remember walnuts looking like. And it's true. This is the whole walnut fruit. There's a big kind of fruity husk around the actual nut on the inside. And the husk is what we need in order to make the ink. So the first main step of this process, I had a cutting board and a knife and some gloves, mainly because the stuff is so stainy. Is that even a word, stainy? You know what I mean. It stains stuff easily. It's just a brownish stain. And so I took all the walnuts I had harvested from the ground and did a clean little slice around them and removed the nut from inside the husk, kept the husk, and eventually discarded all the nuts. Now there is something you need to be a little careful of if you're picking up walnuts off the ground, and that is something that made my heart rate go through the roof a little bit when I first found them, which is maggots. There is a fly called the walnut husk fly, which lays its eggs almost exclusively in these walnut husks. And when you find your walnuts kind of started to half rot on the ground like this, uh, sometimes you'll find some of these in your walnuts. Anyways, enough about the maggots. Look, I sliced and diced all the walnut husks, removed the pits or what nut, their nuts at the middle, and I had a big pot full of walnut husks. Then I filled it up with water to where the water was the same level as the husks inside and threw it on the stove uh, at a low heat, which I quickly realized was too hot of a heat, too high of a heat, and, and let it simmer. I, d I didn't keep a very good track of the lengths of time which I did stuff. I definitely cooked this stuff for a lot longer than I needed to just because I got distracted by other things in my life. Anyways, the husks will quickly turn a very deep, dark black when you start cooking them. And after a while, I took it off the heat. This is like a day later, but I don't think it even takes that long. Maybe two days, I don't know. I mashed them up very fine with a potato masher I bought specifically for this purpose. You probably want to have stuff set aside specifically for this purpose all across the board, because I don't know if you want to cook food in, with these tools again. And then once it was well mashed, I took some... It's probably best to use cheesecloth or something like that, but I found some corn flour sack cloth. Uh, it, it looked good enough and it worked. I pushed it down into a strainer in a bowl and started pouring this thick black sludge in there. And then I'd pick up the cloth and just squeeze it all, squeeze the juices out of there while leaving the solids in the cloth. We're just trying to extract the liquids from the solids. It took me about four goes at it and, uh, I had a big, I had like a pitcher full of this stuff. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it all seemed to be working. It was fun. It would be even maybe funner to not wear gloves because sometimes getting messy just feels really fun. I don't know. Anyways, when I was done straining it, I poured it back into the pot and put it on simmer again, this time just the liquids. I put the lid back on, but I later took it back off because I realized that the point of this step was to kind of evaporate out some of the water and leave just the deep, dark, inky stuff that we need. 
And so after a little while of checking in on every now and then and checking, and every now and then I'd dip a brush in there and see how it was looking on a little piece of paper. And I could see how much water was being removed from the pot. I could see little rings on the side of the pot. I pulled it off the stove and let it cool down. And I had a pair of pantyhose, which, uh, I don't know, that's just what came to mind as something that was a very fine mesh, even more fine than, what, cheesecloth or whatever I had. I took the pantyhose and I poured it through that again as a second filtration because for some reason a, a bit of a skin had formed on top as I cooked it a second time. I'm not sure what was happening. I poured it back into the pitcher and I had almost my final product. The only thing left to do was to add alcohol, which is used as a preservative. Since it's pretty much just fruit juice, it could get moldy easily, so the alcohol keeps it from molding up. And I'm, I added a pretty good amount, which, which gave it a pretty strong smell. And then, really, it was good to go. My first batch of handmade walnut husk ink was completed. And uh, I got a pretty good amount of it from the amount of 30 or 40 walnuts I picked up. Probably like 30. I don't know. Anyways, I, I had read a couple of instructive guides on the internet before this. And it's just one of those things where you find one guide and they seem completely set in their ways and dogmatic about how this is the way it should be done. And if you don't do it this way, you might even get ketchup. And then you read another guide and they seem equally excited and, and sure that this is how you do it and they're, to they're two totally different ways like their ingredients are different and their, their cooking times are different everyone there's there's like a thousand different guides to making something like this on the internet but everyone still seems to end up getting the same result so I threw the cookbook out the window and just kind of winged it and what do you know I still got walnut husk ink and so I stapled a couple of big pieces of paper to a couple of door thingies I had sitting around in my apartment and went to town with it. It's pretty fun. I like doing these larger scale paintings sometimes. I There's something about them. You can get so much... First of all, when you're painting, it, you kind of feel like you're in the painting a little bit. When there's a little piece of paper on the, on the, pa on the desk in front of you, it's a, it's a bird's eye view. It's kind of like the difference between walking around in a park and looking at a park from the top, the top store of a, of a tall building next to it. Every now and then I would take a step back and stand on the other side of the room and especially near the end of the drawing, I would take a step back and stand on the other side of the room and try to get an overview. And sometimes I squint my eyes a little bit. I, even with small drawings, I hold it out at arm's length and squint my eyes, make, make it a little blurry to get a feel for what to do next. But it's definitely a nice change up. I mean, I like drawing little things and I like doing big drawing. I don't even, do I call this a painting or a drawing? I feel like I was drawing with a paintbrush. I'll call it a, a, a pawing, a, drain, a drainting. That works for me. Anyways, this stuff did smell really strong because of the alcohol in it. And if I notice it going moldy at any time, I'll probably just throw it away. It's just so much easier to just buy some ink. But that's probably also why I never cook for my... I'm not the right guy to ask. It was fun to do, though. It was fun to do. I'd recommend it. If you if you have some walnut, you do gotta be... The longer you let them sit around on the ground, the more likely they are to get those nasty maggots in them. There's probably all sorts of different results you can get as far as what you put in them put in the ink as far as a, like a preservative. You can probably all, use all sorts of different things for that. And maybe the, how long you cook it, um, how they start, because they start out green and then they start getting black as you cook them, but they also get black just as they get, like rot on the ground. But maybe you could let them rot in a pot, just like on your back deck or something. I don't know. There's probably all sorts of, there's probably a science to it. There's probably a whole blogs dedicated to this sort of thing. Um, but here's my one video dedicated to it for you. Yeah. My conclusions are that uh, you should try it if you have easy access to walnuts. Hmm. There you go. And you have some pots you don't mind ruining. It didn't really ruin my, my pots look fine afterwards. Probably depends on the type of pot. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Ta -ba -ba -ba. Thank you for watching. 
think I talked for too long. Goodbye. How you, how, how you doing?